In this training movie, we're going to go over how to create object libraries and texture libraries. First of all, let's distinguish between the two. You will find object libraries under the object library icon or going up to library. These here will also be object libraries. If you click on open texture libraries, this row is texture library. So let's bring up an object library. Most of the time the object libraries are objects that you can move around on the screen. You could size them, manipulate them, cut them, warp them, etc. All the plants in this picture are objects. Then there are texture libraries which are these pavers here and the grass. They're usually seamless texture libraries. Um, so let's just change that. Um, so we click on the driveway. We we'll go here to pattern library. All these libraries available in the program are texture libraries. And let's change the driveway by clicking on a texture library. So that's the difference between an object and a texture library and where to find them in the program. Now keep in mind object libraries and texture libraries can have subgroups and let me show you what that looks like. So if we go here to object library, we'll go here to plants and we're going to shrubs, we've got northern shrubs and southern shrubs. So that's plants, shrubs, northern or southern. Whenever you have a pull off menu like this, all you have to do is put a period in the name. And let's show you how that works. So now I want to make a library of say lights. So the first thing I'm going to do is go up here to library, new library, and I have object library selected here. So I'm going to have one called lights and then I'm going to place a period here because I'm going to have different categories of lights and this one is going to be best quality. So I click OK and then I click OK again and now that library is created. So if I go up here to library and click on lights you'll see that the sub menu is best quality. But there's nothing in the library. So you have to add the items to the library. It's very simple to do that. Click on items, add items, and then navigate to the folder where you have those files saved. The files can be saved on your C drive or a external hard drive, even a USB card. I do not recommend doing a USB card, but it can be done. But you cannot have the files over a network because the path of a network has a double backslash in it and it just doesn't work. So copy them over to an external hard drive if you don't have room on your C drive. So I'm going to go into best lighting here. I want to do pathway lights and these are all the lights here and they're already LOBs. So I'm going to select all of them by doing a control A or you could click and drag across all of them. but Control A is faster. Click open and then it's created this library. You could test them by always bringing up one of the library items and you'll see it's now on the screen. Now for this library to be always in the program I need to save it. So I'll go here to library, save library and click yes and now that library is saved. So I'll close it. I'll go back up here to library, lights, best quality and there is our pathway lights. Now you notice if I have more folders for the lights actually throwing them all in best quality might make it, well it will make it, harder to find the uh, particular lights that you want because these were path lights and I kind of did this on purpose so I could show you how to change the name of the library. So I have this library called best quality but if I go in here to library and I want to edit the library name I'm going to put another period here to make it a subcategory and I'm going to call these path lights and then click OK and I need to save the library again. So I'll close it and now I'll go up here to library, lights, best quality and you see I now have a subcategory path lights and there are my lights. Now if you've made a library and you decide that you don't want certain items in the library, it's easy to delete them instead of remaking a whole new library. For example, let's say I don't want these two lights here that look like sticks. So I'm going to click on one of them and then go up here to items and go delete item. It'll ask you if you're sure, click OK, and that item is deleted from the library. We'll repeat that to get rid of the other one. 
so it's easy to delete items out of your existing library. Now if you want to change the name that appears in the library for a particular item, all you need to do is select on the item you want to rename, go here to items and click edit item. Then click on name. This is the name that appears in the library. It's not going to change the name that appears on the object. So let's say we want to call this brass. and We want it in capital letters so that it shows up. I'll click OK and as you can see now it has brass there as part of the name. Of course you're going to need to save this library too to keep that uh, name change there. Now you will notice that when I select one of the items from the library it appears behind the library. Let's minimize it so you could see it. It's there I just couldn't see it because the library was in front of it. So if you want the item to come to the screen and the library to get out of your way, go here to library and click on shrink after use. You'll see that now it has a check mark in there. So now I'm going to double click that library to bring it on the screen. You see it came on the screen and the library minimized and got out of my way. Now I've already shown you how to edit a library name. So if we click on edit library name, you see it's lights, dot, or period, depending on how you want to look at it, best quality, which is the manufacturer, dot, path light, which is the type of light that it is, so that you have the pull-off menus and subcategories of these lights. If you want to edit this for any reason, you can just select in here, and I'm just going to make that a capital L and click OK. Again, you're going to need to save the library for that to be there the next time you open it. Also, you have remove library. If I want to get rid of this library completely, I just decided, you know what, this is useless. I'm never going to use it again. You click on remove library and it will be removed from the program completely. Doesn't delete the actual objects in their folders. They're still there. It's just the library that points to those objects is going to be deleted out of the program. Now the last command here, refresh thumbnails, you're going to use this if you've made a change to the library and you want it to refresh or redraw the whole thing. Um, let's give you an example of that. Let's say I go in here to program defaults and I click on small. Now watch when I click OK, the refresh is going to begin. That's the refreshing there. It's redrawing the library and now I have small images or small thumbnails for those images. They haven't sized down. They're still the same size. It's just it resizes the thumbnails. So if I go back here to default and we'll go back to medium, they came back pretty quick because that was their setting the last time they were saved. Now the last command under library is save library. Because I've already saved this, save is grayed out. It doesn't need to be saved. But if you go in here and let's just delete another item here, and now I go to library. Save library is now in black so that it can be saved. When you click save, it's always going to ask you if you're sure you want to do it. The answer is usually yes. And now this library is saved and save library is grayed out. A lot of times too, you may forget to save a library and you go to close the library. It will ask you if you want to save it before you close it because if you don't, you're going to lose your work that you did on the library. Now making a texture library works pretty much exactly the same way. You go up here to library, click on new library, click on texture library. You have to make sure that that is set so that it makes a texture library. Then you want to give it a name. In this case we gave it the manufacturer name and then a period and then the type of product and we'll click OK. Click OK again and now to open that library you go up to library but click on open texture library and then you will find the library and then the sub library and then of course we need to populate it. So again we just go to add items make sure that we have it set to the right type of file that it is select all of them click open and now you have that texture library created. And as you can see, you can drag and drop them right from the texture library onto a defined area. Now we need to save this library. And let's show you where you're going to find this library in the future. 
Now texture libraries will always be placed into defined areas. So you need to have a defined area on the screen and the defined area needs to be selected. So I've selected on the driveway that I've predefined and then I'll go to pattern library and the secondary library is where you're going to find all the libraries that you create for the program. So they're going to be listed here in alphabetical order. Here's the library that we created. We'll select one of those files and as you can see it's placed in that defined area. One last side note before we move on is that when you're making a seamless texture library you need to make sure that the textures that you're making the library of are seamless. A lot of times I get phone calls from guys saying well I got this library offline and I put it in the image and it doesn't look right. Well did you make it seamless? Oh uh, no. Well then there's your problem. Let me uh, show you a couple of those. So I'm going to bring up a file that I just captured off the internet and at first glance it doesn't look too bad but if you look closer you'll see that these are not complete stones here in this line here and you can see where these line up that stone in itself is not complete there's one sawed off here and another one sawed off there so it, it's not a good looking image and it's not going to give you the results you want it's a process to make pavers or decorative concrete seamless so keep that in mind if you think you can just grab something off the internet and run with it doesn't usually work 